Okay, you know we have the world's best CPUs. Improving people's lives in a meaningful way requires innovation that leads to better and more seamless experiences. But what does that mean? Innovating in these key areas is essential to our goal of improving and enriching lives. But what does that mean? That enrich the lives of individuals around the world. Tell me what that means. At Intel, we have a very specific, very public purpose that informs everything we do to create world-changing technology that improves the life of every human on the planet. What are we actually saying here? You can literally see it. From improving personal health care to facilitating positive social interaction for those in isolation, to simply making our lives a little more convenient in the face of a hectic day. And wow, it has been fun. Wow. The AI in the Intel Innovation Unleashed event was very believable. Good job, Intel. So Intel did have some actual announcements that they sort of forgot to talk about. It was a really strange keynote from Computex 2021. It was, it was another disconnected train wreck. Intel's had a few of these lately for its keynotes. It's very unfortunate because the company does have some actual products to talk about. But instead of covering the couple of things they have to talk about in some technical detail, clearly the executives at Intel are going, what, we only have two CPUs to talk about and not 27? How do we make 40 minutes of content out of two CPUs? Clearly Intel could have just asked us. That's what we do every day. But there's still a lot to go over. The Beast Canyon Nuck is one of the cool ones that Intel didn't talk about at all. And uh, it also started on the really high and positive keynote of the pandemic for six minutes. That was a good mood to set. Good job, Intel. Let's get into the actual details of what Intel had to talk about. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut and Cryonaut thermal pastes are high-performing thermal interfaces for use on CPUs and GPUs. You can bring an old card back to peak performance by repasting it and doing preventative maintenance, and Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut is ideal for water cooling and air cooling for new and old cards alike. Cryonaut paste is one of the top performing pastes for extreme overclocking with CPUs and GPUs and has been used in several world record scoring machines. Learn more at the link in the description below. So again, Intel had a couple of real announcements despite making itself into a punching bag yet again. Uh, it sent out a 52 page PDF with actually a good amount of detail and a lot of the slides never made it into the presentation for some reason. And then you look at the people speaking at the presentation, and it's primarily salespeople and executives. So maybe not a big surprise, but Intel, for whatever reason, still hasn't figured out how to communicate with people, despite its competitors, both AMD and NVIDIA, really getting a pretty firm grasp on keynotes, almost down to a science of what to say, how to get people excited, and how to not make it feel as corporate. Now, they certainly do a lot of that too, but Intel's is, it's, it's about 99% nothing and 1% content. We're not saying Intel has to go full nerd on this, but AMD and Nvidia have figured out how to get some of that technical information out there without feeling so cold and robotic. Uh, certainly though, bragging about how your product does a great job at blending personal and work lives together into one isn't really a great way to set the tone. That's very tone deaf, nor is the pandemic itself as your six minute opener. And although Nvidia and AMD have also made some of these mistakes, the numbers really don't lie for the companies. Intel's keynote had something around 1,700 to 2,000 viewers on the live stream while it was live. My greatest flops are their biggest hits apparently. And AMD and Nvidia, easily break in the tens of thousands for a lot of their keynotes. Uh, and in the past, they've done upwards of 200,000 for some of the Twitch live streams. So it is clear that Intel has a communication problem. If we were to describe the tone of Intel's keynote, it'd be tone deaf. Intel has no idea who it's talking to anymore. The presentation was oddly robotic. The movements were bizarre and looked directed. The Taiwan ecosystem is a huge part of this progress. Today, we're also affirming Stop right there, criminal scum! The facial expressions almost looked programmed, and all of the emotion in the event felt completely forced. And I am looking forward to connecting with you. As Pat said, 
We have unleashed innovation at Intel. We will assist in developing technologies that enhance the compute experience. What does that even mean? There's a lot of quotes like that in the Intel presentation. If, if one of our writers wrote that, I'd be asking the same question. What does this sentence mean? And Intel saying developing technologies that enhance the compute experience. If that came to me, I would send the person back to the computer and say, tell me what we're doing that enhances the computer experience instead of telling me we're enhancing the computer experience. We live work, and play at a global scale. Clearly. So at this point, why Intel, a company with a $230 billion market cap, can't get a scriptwriter to push back on these things and say, but what does that mean? But what does that mean? Tell me what that means. What are we doing? That's what Intel needs at its company at this point, is one of the many media people it's hired to sit there and read the script and go, what are we actually saying here? A better place through canonical data models to communicate between endpoints. Anyway, let's get into the actual details of the keynote. Oddly, Intel completely neglected to detail its Beast Canyon NUC in the discussions. The NUC series has been one of Intel's most consistently interesting and well-built offerings. It always uses a unique chassis. They're regularly well-designed. They have some really cool features. It's also either available as a pre-built or a bare bones kit, very portable. Some of them can be mounted to monitors. They're powerful. They do a lot of cool things, but it wasn't really talked about. And it's utterly vexing why Intel would relegate the NUC to the bench for this keynote. It's like they're not even trying anymore. Instead of talking about the specs of the new laptops or spending time on the performance or talking about the cool features of the internals of the NUC, talking about architecture, or even just talking about the existence of some of its products that are coming out, it's busy congratulating itself in a circular fashion about how good the last year was, which again is sort of tone deaf. So as for the new NUC, the Beast Canyon one, it looks cool, but this is the only thing we got. It's just one slide. It's supposed to be a new small form factor NUC. It's an eight liter size chassis. The box is listed as supporting full length DGPUs in that eight liter chassis. And it also looks to have mesh panels for some access to air at least. The chassis will have new 11 series H SKU CPUs in it, so we're actually interested in it, and it's something we'd like to look at. Unfortunately, information was not readily available. So we know that it exists, and that's about it for the NUC. Back to you, Steve. Moving on to CPUs, Intel also has two new CPUs in the mobile and laptop family. This is where Intel is actually the most competitive right now, but you'd never know it by the way Intel talks about its products. Recently, my coker went to the river. Uh, everything just feels sort of forced and fake and weird in the keynote. And wow, it has been fun. But they are actually competitive in mobile, and you should be paying attention to Intel's laptops. Intel announced the Core i7-1195 G7 and the Core i5-1155 G7. It's their CPUs. So these are four core eight thread parts. The 1195 G7 has 96 EUs with Iris XE for the integrated graphics processor. And it's got a base spec of DDR4-3200 or LPDDR4X 4266. The power range is estimated at 12 to 28 watts. And the frequency is in the range of 2.9 gigahertz to sort of 5 gigahertz, although that comes with the usual caveat of being turbo boost on limited cores for limited durations. All core max turbo is listed as 4.6 gigahertz by Intel for this part. And the i5-1155 G7 is also a four core eight thread part, confusingly, but cut down to 80 EUs and eight megabytes of cache from 12 megabytes. Frequency ranges only 2.5 to 4.5 gigahertz for this particular part. Intel also made some weird comments about real world as in really available in its slides. And we're not really sure what form of speech this is supposed, this really is supposed to be. It's, it's either an, an adverb or an exclamation at this point, as in it's, it's really available or it's really available, as in we have a lot of them, please buy our laptops. It was sort of weird, but the company intends to have 60 additional systems shipping by June of 2021. From what we know about AMD's current pipeline, it looks like June will be a pretty competitive month for both of these companies. Intel advertised a 19% generational multi-threaded performance uplift. We've seen some of these numbers before, although its competitive slides versus AMD were kind of all over the place. Intel showed a benchmark, for example, with its 11980HK and an RTX 3080 versus AMD's R9 5900HX 
and an RTX 3080, except with one key difference subtly noted. Intel, in its infinite wisdom, ran its system with the maximum vBIOS graphics power at 155 watts for its while allowing uh, a 25 watt advantage against AMD's 5900HX system. We're not even comparing like for like anymore at this point. It's sort of a facade. And throughout the other benchmarks, the power limit for the GPU changes. So this isn't like a one off and it's not like they only have this one laptop to work off of with 155 watt limit because that number moves up and down between all the different laptops. It makes it very hard to actually take anything away from the charts that's true like for like. So for having the, the passive aggression of an angsty middle schooler with its really available commentary, we would expect that Intel could at least produce data to stand on its own merits. Because again, these mobile and laptop CPUs, they're actually pretty compelling, but Intel's just not doing a good job of communicating that. And sometimes some extra transparency here or even hamstringing their own product it could benefit the company, kind of like what AMD has done with some of its desktop CPU presentations. Intel also claimed significant leads in gaming performance, this time giving itself a 10 watt GPU reduction versus AMD, but a 14 watt CPU power increase. It's a little hard to do the comparison, so you'll just have to look for third party benchmarks later on, but it at least looks promising. As for this video editing benchmark that Intel showed, a couple of things. First of all, we use Adobe Premiere a lot, so we are experts in this specific task. And what you're seeing, there's a couple things. One is in the AMD version of this benchmark, you'll notice that there are some cuts in the multicam edit. And whenever there's cuts in Premiere, we notice that things slow down a bit. And you'll see that here, where as it rolls over the cut, it slows down a bit. And typically you would tap spacebar and tap it again to pause and start playing again so that it can buffer and play properly. The second thing is this is a GPU accelerated task. If Intel has enabled the IGP and is using the IGP acceleration for the playback window, then it is going to have a massive advantage. Whereas if AMD without an IGP, but with a DGPU in the laptop, uh, is not using GPU acceleration and is instead running entirely on the CPU, then it's a completely unfair, pointless comparison. Two more notes here too. One of them is that Intel has the playback window set to full quality in both of these. And that's, you probably wouldn't actually edit a video that way with this type of, this amount of clips. And the second thing is that in one of Intel's own benchmark charts, you can see that Intel is exiting the power spec of the CPU as it has defined it and running above the power official guidance at a higher wattage than what was listed in the actual spec sheet. Thank you for your support. We look forward to continuing this important work. Now let's turn- Alder Lake was also discussed. Alder Lake S is supposed to be the next major desktop CPU platform from Intel and is also going to be very interesting for its move to 10 nanometers. We've been waiting for that forever. So of course, upon hearing the words Alder Lake in the presentation, we immediately stopped tweeting about the train wreck that it was and started listening because this was the interesting part. And I'm also excited to share that Alder Lake Mobile is also powered on and executing beautifully. We're sampling to customers and partners as we speak. And there's gonna be a lot more to share on the entire Alder Lake lineup later this year. Stay tuned. And uh, then it transitioned to another topic, at which point I, I sort of leaned back in my chair and looked at the screen. I was waiting for more. And all, I was, what? that's it? That's all? You can literally see it. So yeah, all we know is that Alder Lake, again, is in a product and working. Intel, the reason we're being a bit more cynical about this than normally is because Intel has done this before with this product. It's not the first time Intel has shown Alder Lake in a computer on a stage and said, this has Alder Lake in it, cool, huh? And then put it back down. Thanks, Steve. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger also talked about the chip shortage very briefly. There's a, a quote we'll pull from it where Intel said, we've doubled our internal wafer capacity in the past four years, but while the industry has taken steps to address near-term constraints, it could still be a couple of years for the industry to address foundry capacity, substrates, and components. And there's a, a, another minute or two talking about the capacity and the supply constraints within specifically the silicon side of the industry and the substrate side actually. Uh, that's been going on for a while now, but not a whole lot other than that. No particular action items. Uh, Intel's basically said it's working on bringing more fabs online and the chip shortage is going to be a thing for a little while. 
you can literally see it. And that's pretty much it. It was the only other announcement was some MediaTek 5G device, not really our coverage spectrum, but uh, that's it. There's two CPUs for mobile, which Intel didn't get into the details of, shockingly. There, or maybe not. There's the Intel Beast Canyon NUC, which Intel ignored. And then there was Alder Lake, which, again, no details at all. It would have been nice, you know, Intel, if you're listening, there are things you can talk about here. The sense that we get watching these keynotes, and I don't like getting into this punditry about a news announcement, but Intel hasn't given me much news to talk about. So we're going to analyze <laughs> Intel's announcement instead. Uh, the sense that we get is that someone at Intel said, what can we talk about at Computex? And the products were presented, and whatever executives or salespeople were in charge said, these ones, these laptops sell the best. Let's talk about these the most. Uh, and someone else said, but there's only two new CPUs. What do I have to talk about? What can I possibly talk about? There's only two CPUs? What are we doing? And then they start panicking about what their keynote content is going to be for 44 minutes. It's like they're having to stretch to meet the airtime. But you know, Intel, there are things you can talk about. The architecture is not a simple thing. You can talk about the architecture, even at a top level, for people who don't know a whole lot about it. Look at what NVIDIA has done. NVIDIA, and we don't necessarily agree with this either, but at least it's done a good job at achieving its goals. NVIDIA effectively convinced people that it created ray tracing, like out of thin air, as if that wasn't a thing before. And the way NVIDIA did that and focused the conversation on NVIDIA products for NVIDIA ray tracing technology was by conveying some of the architectural notes in a top level fashion, which this wider audience can understand, but which also tells the technical audience there's something here. There's some depth to this product beyond it's in a laptop, let's pick it up, here it is, it, it works, and then putting it back down. So like we said, we'd really prefer to just talk about the news here, but that does require there to be news to talk about. And I'm really trying to personally get through to Intel at this point and, uh, and hopefully get someone there to listen because there's technology in all of these parts that can be discussed and it would make Intel look good and competent and like it's really competitive. But you know, when Intel, when you're putting slides out there and you say, we're the best, trust us, even if that's true, it's asking a lot to say we're the best, trust us. You have to go back over some of the architecture or go over some of the reasons why it's important. Uh, anyway, that's it. So one of our viewers, I think, put it the best on Twitter the viewer tweeted at us and said, uh, quote, I think my bag of Lay's had more content than the keynote. And yes, yes, Intel's a 44 minute long keynote, just like that bag of chips was 50% air. Uh, most of the words are filler. They didn't really mean anything. And half of the constructed sentences sounded like they came straight out of the show Silicon Valley. Innovating in these key areas is essential to our goal of improving and enriching lives because they have the potential to impact the ways we live, work, and play at a global scale. And we're making the world a better place through software-defined data centers for cloud computing. So that's it for this one. We'll be covering the other keynotes as well. Depending on when this goes up, you'll see some of that on the channel. You can go to our YouTube channel to catch more. There's going to be a decent amount of news videos this week because it's technically sort of Computex, but not really. There's still going to be a lot of news from all the companies, though. We'll be covering it and rounding it up as it comes out. So check back, subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And uh, check out our Twitter feed if you'd like to see more, more, more sort of sarcastic tweets about the, the cringe-inducing keynotes as they air live. That's it.